Escaping Denver, Batch 2, Episode 10, The Peace. see how I get out of this one. My body feels like it's on fire, I'm trying to heal what they beat into me. I can't even. Somebody else's fight. You hear that? But I still think of you. When I'm, I'm alone, alone at, night. at night. That song. When I'm alone at night. That's too loud, isn't it? There's a heat wave, so please bear with me. Right, Noah and Sarah are separated again. Sarah's in the vents, crawling for her life, and Noah is injured, locked up, and just, just finished hearing that song through the walls. I've thought long and hard about it. Andreas sang that song when they thought he was dying. So this is Andreas. I had a theory that it was a robot or a clone, but if, if he knows this obscure song, it must be him. Fixed up and angry, but him nonetheless. Is Andreas an agent for the collective, or like Noah and Sarah, is he just another confused and unwilling participant? There's someone in the cell next to mine that was singing a song that I know. It's not weird to know a song, I, I know that, but it's different this time. Sarah knew the song. She had a roommate or something drill it into her head. She could place it, but not me. I know the words and it feels familiar, but I have no memory of the song. But then how do I know it? How does the guy next door know it? Hey! You still there? See? Si. How did you get here? No, pues, I don't know. You woke up in here? What was your last memory? Who are you? I'm, uh, I'm Brent. And why should I trust you? Because we're in the same boat. Waist deep in the same bullshit with incomplete information. But maybe if we talk, we can fill in the blanks. You there? I'm thinking, cabron. <laughs> What's there to think about? Dude, I woke up in a box with some strangers in a truck. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I need a pinch a second to think. Okay. Fine. Let me know when you're ready to talk. That's Andre. What's he doing in a cell? It's been three hours since I spoke with Andre. Still nothing from his end, but a lot of screaming in the hall. They're moving people, and I don't know why. They haven't come for me or Andre yet, but it's just a matter of time. This isn't like the cell we started in. That place, as scary as it was, felt a lot more clinical than here. This has a more medieval feel to it. This cell feels like it was hewn into the stone. They chiseled out a little pocket and slapped a cruel-looking metal door on it. It's cold and damp, and despite having a flushable toilet, feels like a prison cell out of a Dumas novel. No pageantry here. This is outside of the original test. This is the end of the line. If we're... Yeah, Brand, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. They're taking people. I've heard. Do you know where or why? No, but I'm guessing the answer to either is bad. What about where we are? I don't know what section of floor. When they caught me, they beat me for a while. I, I blacked out and woke up here. Section or floor? 
Of what? Of this. Do, do you really not remember? Going on, I'm not following. We are miles beneath the Denver airport in some sort of facility run by a secret society that's powerful enough to hide a place like this. <laughs> You're out of your pinche mind. Screws loose. Is this what this place is? A place for locos? For crazies? I'm serious. I don't doubt that you are, but are you sane? What I wouldn't give for all this to be a hallucination. I'd have my hand back for starters. No mames, they took your hand? No, but it was lost down here. What they did do was shoot me, beat me, hunt me down, and most importantly, took me from my life. And they did it to you too. I don't know what they did. What do you remember? I woke up to a stranger looking down on me. I don't know why, but my instinct was to fight back. I grabbed his throat, but there was someone else there. A girl. She said my name, and in the moment I reacted, boom. Cracked in the cabeza, in the old noggin by the first guy. Out cold. I woke up in the pinche dark. I could hear voices outside of this coffin, yeah. A metal coffin. I couldn't make out what they were saying. I pounded on the lid, but nobody let me out. I could tell they were moving. At least for a while, but then it stopped. Felt like pinche hours of silence in the dark. And then the lid opened back up and I was face to face with the barrel of a gun. I know when not to fight back. And the soldiers took me here. And that's it? Nothing from before that? From before? Pues no. No, nothing. It feels like I'm trying to remember a dream. Ugh. Yeah. But one we can't wake up from. This is going to sound crazy again, but... I think I know who you are, Andre. Who the fuck are you? How do you know my pinche name? I know more than your name. I know that a few days ago, you were a captive in another section of this facility. I know you've been tested on like me, and, and like me, you have certain abilities that you didn't have before. And I know that you saved my friend Sarah. And lastly, I know that you died. Okay. Who's Sarah? What do you mean I died? You were shot multiple times in the chest, and from what Sarah said, a handful of other places. You being on the other side of this wall should be impossible. The scars. I have scars on my chest and... Oh, my goodness, my leg. How oh, cabron, there's another. I don't remember and... I don't know how. But they fixed you. Who are they? The Collective. Collective of what? I have no... What's happening? Was that your door? Andre, what's happening? Stay back! I said stay back! Stay Andre! Back! Andre! Ah! Oh, when they come for me, I'll be ready. Sarah said she just took off her bed leg before. Said it just untwists. Ah, oh, damn it. This is bolting on. I don't... Take a breath, Noah. Think. There has to be a reason. That bed leg was removable on purpose, whereas this one isn't. They're not dumb. The first cells were part of the test, and the ability to think outside the box was part of it. But these being bolted properly tells me that they're done playing games. I might be out of options. Been nothing for hours. No screams, no doors unlocking, no whispers of passing conversations, nothing. It's exhausting being at the ready. I'm trying to stay prepared for when they burst into my cell and drag me to my feet. What do you think that fate is? I, I, I watched this nature documentary about catching species at the bottom of the ocean. Way deep, like far beyond where people should be able to get. I'm talking James Cameron deep. They built this super high-tech submarine and used this giant vacuum to suck up all the cool new creatures. And the scientists 
We're over the moon. So happy to be part of this historic moment. They brought the creatures to the surface, lovingly handling them, and then out of the blue, bam, dissection. No transition letting us know that we were finished with the gentle curiosity and moved on to the dark stuff. <laughs> That's what I feel like. Hand-selected creature on the cusp of being dissected and there's nothing I can do. What are they even expecting to find inside of me? Did they implant a little black box that will tell everything about me? Are they just gonna... Wait. Hold on. What if there is something inside of me? Like something mechanical or whatever to cause my healing? Diabetics can get implants regulating sugar or whatever. Why couldn't there be something regulating my powers? Hell, there's no telling what they could have implanted in me. I can't see any scars, but something tells me my healing would have erased them. Damn it. I should have thought of this. I should have checked Sarah for scars. You know, they had that tracker in our ears, and at the time, I didn't think it could get any worse. But of course, it gets worse. It always gets worse. That's probably how Andre is the weapon. They fixed him up and implanted something in him because they knew he could get close to us. That Sarah would trust him. But when they found that we had abandoned him in the truck, I guess they decided his usefulness was over. Maybe mine is too. Shit. Noah, we have to go and we have to go now. I think it's a bit of a leap to go from pacemakers and insulin implants to something that puts your healing into overdrive. But what do I know? It's like this story is stuck in a loop and we're once again at the part where Andreas kicks in a door and saves one of them. Is there anything we learned on the first pass that we could apply here? I mean, is Noah onto something? Could Andreas be a weapon against his own knowledge? An unintentional mule for an explosive? I have a hard time believing that they'd bring Andreas back from the dead just to blow him up again. Noah agrees. He must have learned that from Sarah because he called himself Brand. I don't know what good a fake name is down here, especially with everything else he's saying is true, but it's still a big step for Noah knowing when to hold back the truth. I will say this, showing up to save Noah is exactly what we'd expect from the heroic Andreas we met in batch one. Can that count as proof that he's trustworthy or, or is this just another trick? <sighs> yeah, I don't know what good locking it is. They'll have a key. Anything to buy us pinch of time. Where to now? I don't know. I, I think they'd expect us to go up the stairs, considering we're at the bottom. Up makes the most sense. Yeah. But sometimes the less direct route is the safe one. What about, uh, one of these other two doors? We'll just run into pinch of soldiers. Vamonos! You see that? Look through the window of the door. See it? The hallway is pitch black. It just started. It's probably just the security light you didn't notice before. No. It's new. We have to get moving. Vamonos! Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Th there's a bigger pause after the second sequence than after the first. There. It's starting again. Three, four, five. One. We don't have pinch of time for this. Vamonos! <sighs> I can't keep going at this pace. We'll stop if we could find somewhere safe. <sighs> Nothing is safe down here. We'll never stop. Then we never stop. Let's just get up as high as we can. I can't record and climb. Sorry. Update. Okay. No. Sorry, just recording an update. Psst. For who? You said there's no reception down here. There isn't. Not really, anyways. We got a singular sketchy bar when we were in this air shaft thing, but not again since. Air shaft? Yeah. If anything, we should be trying to find that. It had a ladder that ran up the side all the way to the surface. Then why didn't you take it? Couldn't reach it. It was the other side of the shaft, which was 
Too far to jump. So you record the updates for what reason? Now it's habit now. Helps to talk about things out loud. Plus, if we're lucky, the messages will make their way out and our unlikely hero will have found help. You even left a message we sent off. Did I? I'd like to hear it. Uh, it was on Sarah's phone. And where is Sarah? No idea. We separated a long time ago. Let's hope she was lucky enough to make it out. Could have made it out. Could be dead, anyone's guess. Hope is dangerous down here. Update. Andre and I have made it to some sort of server room. Looks like a small library in here, but instead of stacks of books, it's rows and rows of these servers. Black, covered in blinking red lights. We're hoping the hum from this room helps to hide our tracks while we regroup. We went up three floors before we heard some voices coming down the stairs and ducked down a hallway where we found this room. It's hard to keep track of how high we've made it. All the floors are starting to look alike. These halls were long and tiled, filled with stale air and fluorescent lighting. The server room's a little better. I guess the temperature control in this room is helping to keep the air fresh. Flashing lights. Hey, Andre, do you know Morse code? I used to, back in the day. No idea how much I retained. I'm the same. I learned as a kid, so... If you've used it in the last 20 years, you're doing better than me. How's Pinchin Morse code going to help us? Remember that flashing light we saw downstairs? What if it was trying to tell us something? It was five short flashes, a pause, then five short flashes, then a long pause. Whiz. Five short is five. So two of those in a row would be... Pinche 55. 55 mean anything to you? Pues no. Not that I could think of. 55. 55. No. Nothing. What's the plan moving forward? To move forward. We look a little obvious right now. Me with the blood on my shirt. And you with your oversized coveralls? If we can find a change of clothes, we can just walk out of this place. Damn it! Street clothes. Update. We've made some serious headway. We popped in and out of doorways, but so far have yet to be spotted. Hijo de la chingada! We lucked out and found a locker room, which we're hoping will provide a change of clothes. There are clothes. But we'd stand out in anything that isn't a pinche uniform. And these are street clothes. If they change out of their street clothes here, there must be something to change into. I'll take a look around. This place is pretty big. It's clean in here. The lockers look newly painted. But there's still something dingy about the place. The lockers are ancient, and it's more the vibe of a locker room from like a mine rather than the locker room of a gym or something. It's like I've gone back in time. I wonder where Andre is going. You've never been stuck in a conversation. He's not that bad. He really is. Archivist has by far the coolest job and it's wasted on him. He takes his job seriously. There's a difference between taking your job seriously and hey. Hey. Nice jumpsuit. Looks like a relic. Huh. Yeah. It's, uh, pretty old. Seriously, it's museum quality. <laughs> we could bring it to the archivist. Yeah. Yeah, it was the newest uniform they could find. Sounds like hazy. You new? Very. Well, new guy, I'm Tim, and this is Sinead. Hi. What department are you in? I'm with... Um, I'm with the, uh... Sir. I got you a new uniform, Brand. Sorry, we didn't realize you were with the Iron Guard. It's fine. Sir, with your permission, we'll give you two some space. What just happened? You showed up in that uniform and the blood drained from their faces. Who the hell are the Iron Guard? Until we get out, 
We are. It's working. Whoever these iron guards are, people are scared of them. More than once, people have opened doors for us. This might even work. Cabron, what is it? There. Down that hall. It's the flashing lights again. Same pattern. It's a pinch of security light. Let's go! This is different. Uh, I'm pretty sure someone's down there doing this with a flashlight. We have to move. Andale! What if someone's trying to help us? They're not. If we want to make it out of here, we need to move now, Noah! You're probably... What, what, what did you call me? I said we need to move, Brand. I thought... Andre, where did you get these uniforms? I found them in the pinche locker room. Found them? Just... sitting out? Yeah, I got lucky. Now vamonos! Show me the scars. We don't have pinche time for this. Before we continue, I need to see the scars. <laughs> so close. We were so close, Noah. How do you know my name? I know everything. I know about your troubles with Palmer and what damaged you and your little friend have caused. Why do you look like Andre? Because I am Pinche Andres. It was all a ruse. The saving Sarah, the firefights, even you getting shot, somehow faked. And you two ate it off. <laughs> so what? You make it hard on yourself and do something stupid, or you play ball. Let's assume I'm not going to play ball. Then I bring you back in pieces. We only kept you alive hoping you'd lead us to Sarah. She's the dangerous one. Everyone keeps saying that. You have no idea what I'm... The flashing stopped. Vamanos! Yeah, I don't think I will. Noah, run towards my voice! Andale! Run! I'll catch you! Quickly, in here! Who are you? We are those who remember the peace. Who is this new person and what does those who remember the peace even mean? <sighs> and the other shoe finally dropped with Andreas. I was really hoping he was good. I wanted to be wrong about him. He fooled me. Fooled Sarah and in turn fooled Noah too. But it does reinforce that Sarah is the real deal though. Dangerous. Thank you to Curious Cast and to you, the listeners, for sticking with me on this journey. If you heard something I didn't address or have a theory of what's going on, please reach out to me at escapingdenverpod at gmail.com or on Instagram at escapingdenver. I'll be back in a couple of weeks with another episode of Escaping Denver. <laughs>